end of the year speechathon for filling in a couple of students that wanted to get some speeches in that didn't get done during the school year. We had five scheduled, three had to drop out, so we had two very brave young men who are still continuing with the project today. But so thank you again. We have uh, right now Josiah Lawson here to do his second speech. Josiah Lawson. and this is my second speech entitled Imagine That. Imagine waking up in a world where nothing makes sense, where every book is filled with gibberish, every word is jumbled, distorted, and we can't read them without getting heavy. We can't write or spell what they're saying. There's millions of sounds buzzing around you. Everything's bright, loud, full of distraction and full of Confusion. You can't focus on any one thing without difficulty in hand. You can't remember, you can't remember everything you saw and heard. You suddenly have you suddenly have trouble speaking and saying what's inside your head. You're supposed to sit down and do nothing. And you can't you don't know how in this new confusing world. That's just a picture of what it's like for me in this world. <laughs> I have dyslexia and ADHD, and I'm going to talk to you about what this diagnosis is and how I'm learning and still learning to cope and make it better because of it. Now, let's see here. Roberto Olivardia, who is a Clinical psychologist at the Harvard Medical School stated that about 50 to 60 percent of people with ADHD have learning disabilities. The most common of these is dyslexia, a large language-based learning disability that affects reading. Eight to 17 percent of the population is affected by dyslexia. It can be vastly misunderstood. Some of those people have a dual diagnosis, and I am one of them. Reading, on, reading is difficult for me, and spelling seems impossible. <laughs> Words are hard to remember and pronounce. Also affects my ability to speak. speak. I also have a hard time focusing and sitting still. I don't want to focus on what I can't do, but what I can. Mm -hmm. I want to I am going to use this cabbage for example of the human brain. Yes, it's a cabbage. Pretend it's a human brain for now. <laughs> Here's a cerebral, um, <laughs> cerebral cortex. A thin layer of let's see here, a thin layer of cells that organize into units called mini -cults. Many call limbs are like computer chips in the brain that process a certain amount of data by themselves. But they work really work they work really <laughs> great together. Like how computer networks work together to process data. Now, here's the normal human brain. <laughs> Here's the normal human brain. There is an equal amount of higher and lower mini columns. The um, lower mini columns are good for um, <laughs> fine, de fine detailed processing. And the thicker, longer mini columns are for um, problem solving. Problem solving. Now, Here's a dyslexic brain. Probably. Here's a dyslexic brain. They're longer, long, thick mini columns. They're spaced out further out throughout the whole brain. They're all connected to um, each other. And they can connect to one side to the other. Like this one can connect to way over here. And all those sticks are broken. <laughs> 
This is useful for problem solving and linking two opposite things together. Now here's some of the positive ways that I'm different. I am able to think outside the box. I'm creative, artistic as well. I have good problem skill solving skills sometimes. <laughs> I'm always thinking, always thinking, all, all the time. My hearing charts are up. My hearing ability is off the charts, and I can hear everything all the time. Very annoying sometimes. <laughs> Hard to focus. <laughs> I am able to watch videos and create things in my head 3D and make things like, say, models or models and fix things or even change things. I can put two different things together and create solutions. I'm good at simplifying a complicated thing and keeping it simple for others to understand. I am able to hack dyslexia and ADHD and turn them into my advantages. Reading books is difficult and scrambling words and decoding every letter and word is very slow and boring. So I use audiobooks. If audiobooks are slow, my ADHD kicks in and makes it hard for me to focus on. So I've been learning to increase the speed of the audiobook while I'm doing something active, like cleaning, or walking the dog, or juggling. So, I don't get bored. I also use speech-to-text to communicate, like phones, tablets, um, laptop, computers, and it makes a big difference for me. I keep putty or these little magnet things move around here. <laughs> In my pocket, I help me focus when I'm sitting down to sit in school. Because I'm homeschooled, I am able to walk around, jump, walk, do whatever I need to help me, mm -hmm. help myself. And it's not a distraction to others, because I'm homeschooled, it's just practically me, that thing up there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I use multi-sensory learning, not rote memorization. Learning to read using tiles with letters on them. Because it's, it's that's how I've learned to read and read, and I still am slow, but I'm able to read a lot more than other dyslexics would be able to today. I'm also learning to watch videos and make models, replicas, and experiencing history enactments like Sarah's Ford. I've learned by doing and not by memorizing facts or long papers. I am learning as well to <laughs> Accept, speak up for myself and accept help when needed. I am very stubborn, that's very hard for me. I want to do everything myself. You can ask my parents. <laughs> I'm learning to use my dyslexia and ADHD to my advantage. Now, imagine a world where my way of learning, my way of understanding things was accepted and understood as normal. After all, God created me the way I, what I am. And Everyone's different. Isn't that what makes the world interesting? Thank you. Mm -hmm. wow.